So, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, you are welcome to another session of our online uh, lectures. So, today we'll be talking on this topic, this mathematics. So, we are doing general vision of our last term works, which will be based on these four topics simultaneous equation, inequality, circle geometry, and quadratic equation. So all these four topics is something I believe you have been taught thoroughly. So let's start from simultaneous equation. You know, simultaneous equation may be of two types. Apart from two unknown, three unknown, so we may have linear simultaneous equation and we can also have simultaneous equation which will be one linear and one quadratic and we have three methods for secondary school level of solving simultaneous equation so we can solve simultaneous equation using elimination method substitution method and graphic method but we all know that elimination method is not applicable to simultaneous equation of one linear one quadratic so if the question is one linear one quadratic we make use of Substitution method. So let's just look at some examples. So look at this question now. We have example one. So 2 raised to the power x plus 2y equals 2 raised to the power 0 and 3 raised to the power 2x plus y equals 27. So we are asked to solve this simultaneous equation. So, solution. Solution. So, 2 raised to the power x plus 2y equals 0. Okay, it is equal 1, equals 1. So, if that's our equation 1, and this one, the second one, we have 3 raised to the power 2x plus y equals 27. That is our equation. What equation two? If you look at this question very well, you will see that it's not another simultaneous equation. It comes in form of exponential. So, which means you have to apply your law of what indices. You know, look at that first equation. Here we have two raised to the power x plus two y equals one. That's one. You know, any number is power zero is one. So, which means that one we can replace it by five raised to the power zero. 4 is power 0, any number we like to be this power 0. But because we have 2 here, we are looking for something that we have the same base as this place, which means you can just change this one to 2 raised power 0. If you change this one to 3 raised power 0, 2 raised power 0 is also 1, which means that this base here and this one we cancel. So which means it's not the x plus 2y equals, or equals 0. You can call that one equation 3. Now, that equation 2 also, it can be written as 2x plus y. So let's say 3 raised to the power 2x plus y equals that 27 in the same class, what? 3 raised to the power 3. So which means that this 3 and this one also, so we cancel. So we now have what? 2x plus y equals what? Equals 3. We call that equation what? Equation 4. Now you cannot solve that equation 3 and equation 4 simultaneously using what? Elimination method. So bring the two equations together. So we have x plus 2y equals 0. And we have 2x plus y equals 3. So we call this one equation 3. We call this equation 4. Now we want to use elimination method. But before you can use elimination method, there is two important things. The thing is, the first one is, look at this variable now, the variable x. Any variable you want to eliminate, the coefficient of that variable must be the same in both the equation. So it means that if you want to eliminate variable x from this simultaneous equation now, it means that the coefficient of x in both equation 1 and equation 2 must be the same. In both equation 3 and 4, it must be the same. That is, if you have 2x here, you must make sure that we also have 2x here. The same thing goes with y. If it is variable y that you want to eliminate, it means that the coefficient of y here also, it must be 2. It must be the same with this. But look at this equation. The coefficient of x here is 1. Here, 2. Here, we have y. The coefficient will be 1. And here, we have 2. Which means that if you want to eliminate 
variable x, you have to multiply this equation 3 by what? By 2. That 2 is the coefficient of x in the equation 4. So which means that when you multiply that equation 3 by 2, so we can now say equation 3, equation 3 times 2. That will give us 2x plus 4y equals what? Equals 0. We've got that one equation 5. Now, after that, so we now have our equation for, so we have 2x plus y equals 3. That's our equation 4. So we now have this one to be our equation 5, which is 2x plus. So we have 2x plus y equals 3 equation 4. Here we have 2x plus 4y equals what? Equals 0, which is our equation 5. So you can solve these two now simultaneously using what? Elimination method. So which means you can say equation 4 minus equation 5. Equation 4 minus equation 5. We have. So this will be 2x minus 2x. That one has gone. Then we have y minus 4y equals what? 3 minus 0. So which means this one will now be what? Minus 3y equals 3. What are you going to do next? You divide 2 by what? By minus 3. When you divide 2 by minus 3, it means our y is what? You don't know minus 3. Minus 3. So our y will now be equals minus 1. So that's the value of y. y equals minus 1. Now to find the value of x, to find x, to find x, comma, just put y, put y equals minus 1 into any of those equations. So we can use equation 4. Let's say into equation, equation 4. So that equation 4 is what? Is 2x plus y equals 3. So which means we have 2x plus, we have minus 1, then equals 3. So from there we have 2x minus 1 equals 3. We have 2x equals 3 plus 1. So we have 2x equals 4. So you divide 2 by 2, our x is what? So which means our x is equal to 2. So which means that the solution for x, now see, therefore our x comma y is now Okay, you can see it there. So now be our x comma y will now be two comma minus one. So that's that on simultaneous equation. You know you have been taught before it's just a revision class. Now you can try this or before you move on that on, on that side. The next one is Inequality. Inequality. That's another topic. Inequality. We don't do much on this inequality. I will just give you some hints, rules that guide solving of inequality. So we can say rules. So if you know all these rules guiding the inequality, it will be very easy for you. Whatever question you are given on inequality, the first rule is that you know number one. So when the position, when the position of elements, when the position of elements, in an inequality, I'm coming. So let's move on. So for this one, you have seen the answer that x is equal to two and y is equals minus one. And I said earlier that we are now moving on towards inequality. Inequality. So I will just give you some rules on this inequality. And for first rule is that, number one, when you are solving an inequality, you know what we mean by inequality? When we have equal sign, we call that an equation. That is, we know that, for example, when we say x equal to 2 or x plus y equals 4, that is, we are 100% sure that our x is 2. That's why we call this x equals 2. That one, we can call that one an equation. But an inequality is when you are not sure 
we are not hundred percent sure that this also -so is equal to this also. -so. For example, now we can say x greater than or equal to four. You will see here that is either x is greater than four or is equal to four. But we are not saying that it is equal to four. So which means that the value of x is not that equal to four, but it is equal to four and also what greater than four. Which means the value of x starts from four, five, and so on. So we have so many inequality signs like less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and sometimes we even have not equal, so, and so on like that. So the rule regarding the inequality is that when you are solving an inequality and the po you get something like, let's say, 2 greater than x, that's the first rule. 2 greater than x. You know you cannot leave your answer like this. You will want to interchange the position of these two elements, which means you bring x here, and these two will come to this side. And the first rule is that if the position of an element in an inequality, if the position of the two elements are interchanged, it means that the inequality sign will be what? Will be changed. The inequality sign will be reversed. So which means that it is it was greater than before. Because, because the position of these two elements, the position of what have been interchanged. So which means that you have to reverse your inequality sign. That's the first rule. The second rule is when you multiply an inequality, the, side, the two sides of an inequality, when you multiply them by negative value, the inequality sign will also be what? It will be reversed. That is, the sign will change. For example, let's say I have eg. Let's say I have minus x less than 2 now. For example, I cannot leave my answer like this because we are looking for the value of positive x, which means for this one to cancel this, you have to multiply both sides by minus. By doing that, so this one will cancel then the minus will come here. Once the minus comes here, it means that this sign, this inequality sign, we also want to be reversed to change to this. Are you getting my point now? So, or sometimes you have minus 4x, let's say greater than or equal to 12. This one definitely is means that once you divide your value, your answer by minus 4, this sign will also work, will be reversed. So for this one now you say divide by minus 4. When you do that, it means that your x will be what? Less than or equal to minus 3. Which means the sign has what? The inequality sign has been it has been changed. Another rule is that when you are multiplying inequality, both sides of inequality by positive values. Please, you must bear in mind that the inequality sign remains unchanged. When you are multiplied by positive values, the sign remains unchanged. Now, we still have this third group. That one, most of you, when you are doing inequality, question on inequality, even those that you think they will get this right, when they get to that point, sometimes they get lost. And that is when you have inequality in form of fraction. You know, in a normal fraction, in a normal fraction equation, when you have x, let's say you have x plus 4 over 5 or over 6 equals 3x over 2. And you want to do cross multiplication. When you do a cross multiplication, you can say x plus 4 times 2 equals 6 times 3x. Or you can say 6 times 3x equals what? 2 to bracket x plus 4. See these two now. You see that they are equal. They are the same. But that is not so when it comes to inequality. Are you getting my point now? Let's say I have beta, the sign of beta than here. So when you are doing cross multiplication inequality, the position of the numerator must not change. The position of the numerator must not what? must not change, which means that when you say you want to do your cross multiplication here, so you now say six into bracket three is for x greater than two into bracket x plus four. This is wrong. Are you getting this now? This is wrong. It should be this x plus four bracket two greater than six then three x. Are you getting my point? This one is correct. So, when you are doing cross multiplication in inequality, the position of the numerator must not, must not change. And in case 
If you change the position of the numerator, it means the inequality sign will also what? We also change. But it is better you have it in mind that the position of the numerators must not change. That's the third rule. And the first one is absolute inequality. When we are given, what do we mean by absolute? When we are given problem like this. So let's say you are given x plus 1 less than 7. For example, now. So, what we mean by absolute is this. Let's say we have some people we call it modulus or magnitude. But in under this inequality, we call it absolute value. So, which means this is absolute value of x. The meaning of absolute value is telling you that this value of x is either positive or what? Or negative. So, which means when you are given value like this, you cannot believe say that your x is positive. You can say it's either the result is plus x or minus x. So which means that x plus 1 you are given, the absolute value of x plus 1, it can either be x plus 1, I know some of you will think the next one will be x minus 1. No, it's not x minus 1. So, or minus into bracket x plus 1. Please, don't do that mistake because some of you, we just assume that uh, since we have x plus 1 here, so this plus now you now change it to minus, it now be x minus 1. No. It should be x plus 1 or x minus 1. So, which means when you are given this kind of question in an inequality, you cannot just continue something like this. You have to break the result into this. So, which means having that question. So, the solution will now be x plus 1 less than 7 or minus x plus 1 less than 7. You see that this one is straightforward. You just have x less than 7 minus 1. Then we have x less than 6. And this one we have this minus here. You can, from here you can just, it's either you put the bracket or you can multiply to a minus from this. So when you do your multiplication by minus, you can have x more plus 1. So when this minus 1 is come to this place, this sign will also what? It will change. So we now have greater than minus 7. So here we have x greater than minus 7. Then this plus 1 is the same thing as if you are solving an you know, my equation, you know this is plus. So once this plus sign, once it's shown, it's shown the inequality sign, that positive sign will also turn towards to negative. So which means here we have 7 minus 7 minus 1. So we have x greater than 1 minus 8. So the answer is x less than 6 or x greater than minus 8. Because of my time. Now, the last thing is how do we combine our result in our inequality? It's not all the, uh, all the results you get can, that can be combined. So let's say this one now. Look at this result now. We have x less than 6. And we have x greater than minus 8. This kind of result, you will see that the two results can be what? Can be combined. Because it is possible that x greater than minus 8. What are those numbers that are greater than minus 8? We have minus 7, minus 6, minus 12, and so on. So it is possible that s is greater than minus 8 and also what? Less than 6. So which means this kind of result, it means we have x greater than minus 8, which can be written as minus 8 less than x. Are you getting this now? You know I have explained that one in rule number 2, that once you interchange the position of an element in an inequality, the inequality sign will also what? It will change. So when minus 8 comes here, x comes here, it means this sign will change. That's why I have minus 8 less than x. Are you getting this now? Then this one is already x less than 6. You just put less than 6. So if you now look at it, your final result, you now ask yourself, does it make sense? You see that it makes sense because we say the meaning of minus 8 less than x means that x is greater than minus 8. So which means it's possible that x is greater than minus 8 and also what? Less than 6 at the same time. But there are some values that they cannot be what? They cannot be combined. Like what values? Now, let's consider these values now. Like, we have x greater than 2. And we also have x less than 4. Look at this one. The first one is that x is greater than 2. But it's less than what? Less than 4. 
you see that this one also it makes sense when we combine the result the two results we can say that at the same time two we can say two less than x less than four and you know let me remind you some people may write it as four greater than x greater than two it's still the same thing but it is very it is good when you are combining results in an inequality that you start with the small smaller number so that the inequality sign will be what will be less then the second value here is then now say we have s greater than two, and also we have or s greater than four. Look at this one, this two now. It's not necessary when you have results like this. It's not necessary you combine your result because one result has covered for what for other. It's only this one that cannot cover for this, but this one has covered this because we say s is greater than two. And we still say s is greater than 4. You can just assume that s is greater than 2, generally. Because once we say s is greater than 2, we have 3, 4, and so on. Which means that we have covered what? That 4. But what of when we now get x less than 2? Or s greater than 4? Look at this kind of result. Some people now want to force themselves. If you want to combine this kind of result, if you now say, 2 greater than x greater than 4. Yes, that's how they write it. Please, look at this thing. You see that I put cross J because it makes no sense. How do you say that x is less than 2 and at the same time, you still claim that it's what? It's greater than 4. You see that one is not possible, which means this kind of inequality, they are what? They, are, they cannot be combined. They should be in their own, own separate way because it's not possible that you claim that x is less than 2. What are those numbers that are less than 2? We have 1, 0, and all those negative values. And you still claim that x is greater than 4. How is that possible? So, which means this kind of question, this kind of result, we cannot do what? We cannot combine it. So, which means we can just say that x less than 2. And it will not be and again, it will be or because. These two statements cannot be what? It cannot be combined. It's not possible. It will be s less than 2 or s greater than what? s greater than 4. You see that this thing, they go on on their what? Separate way. And even if you demonstrate it on the number line, you will see that the direction are what? They cannot, ever, they cannot meet. They can never meet. So, which means, let's say we have 2 here. You have 4 here. So, you know, greater is like this. I mean, your right hand, as I have told you earlier, this is greater then your left is less so which means this greater so it, it goes like this this is s greater than 4 and this one less you see now you see that these are two straight lines that are what that cannot meet because their direction are what they are not in the same direction so let me just give you some work to do because of our time you can try this or let me just change this number let me give you this. So you can try this. Let's say assignment. So we have 1 over x plus 2. Then it is modulus. So less than 8. Then number 2. You can do this one for me. Please. This is modulus. Then you must know that. So also, you can do this. x plus 4 over 12 greater than 6 minus 2x over 3. So you can solve those two. Until we meet, so, so high now, Rubika.